now available in paperback and Kindle, vampires stalk the darkness of the Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com. Marvel Studios has taken its Blade reboot starring Marshala Ali off the schedule. Now, the Blade reboot was supposed to open on November 7th, 2025. However, Marvel Studios quietly removed the film from the studio's release schedule and instead have substituted a 20th century studio's Predator Badlands film in its place. Now, this is the latest in a series of setbacks for the Blade film, which was announced way back in 2019 by Kevin Feige as part of Marvel Studios' Fell 4, I mean Phase 4, of films, and this film was supposed to have come out years ago. Unfortunately, the film suffered a numerous series of setbacks that have le led to the film winding up what many call development hell. Now, this Blade movie, again, was announced to be the successor to 1998's legendary film Blade, which starred Wesley Snipes, which wound up revitalizing the entire superhero film genre back in 1998 after Batman and Robin's 1997 box office failure almost killed the entire genre. And Blade was the film that basically ushered in the next era of superhero movies, such as 2000's X-Men, 2002's Spider-Man, both which became blockbusters, and led to other superhero films like the first Hulk and Daredevil, before we wound up eventually getting what we call the MCU, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which came later in 2008 with the legendary iconic film Iron Man. Now, many thought that this Blade reboot was supposed to be an easy film to make, with it featuring an Academy Award-winning actor in Marshala Ali being the star. However, the big problem with this Blade film from its inception has been the fact that the screenwriters they've hired just can't seem to get a script together. Now, the with this Blade film, the writers have written multiple scripts, and they've wound up getting either rejected by Kevin Feige, or they wound up getting rejected by Marshala Ali, and several of the premises in and of themselves that are rumored do not sound very good at all. One premise was Blade basically passing on his swords on to his daughter, which would be, would be featured as the actual lead star in the film, in what many would call a bait-and-switch, and another was featured in the 1920s, and both of these scripts basically just were not good at all when you compare it to the original Blade movie that starred Wesley Snipes in 1998. And this whole inability to get a script together has basically led to the film winding up in this development hell where the film has not been able to get a script off the ground, and since they can't get a script off the ground, they can't really put anything into production, and that's what's been holding up the Blade movie as related to this relaunch, and what also has held up the film has been the pandemic, not to mention the writers and actor strikes. All of these events taking place have basically impeded the ability of Marvel Studios to be able to get a film into production over the last couple of years, not to mention the film has lost two directors, one in Jan Demrog, who decided to quit the film, and another in Basam Tariq, who wound up quitting the film as well. And with this series of just disasters behind the camera, it basically is looking like this Blade film is never going to get off the ground, and sadly, the, this film has just been, again, a development disaster and not the starring vehicle that Marshala Ali expected it to be. And with recent turns of events as related to the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, Marshala Ali may never get his chance to shine as the star of Blade because with the recent Deadpool and Wolverine movie being a billion dollar box office hit that basically featured Wesley Snipes as Blade once again and fans basically raving about Wesley Snipes performance even though he was 62 years old 
Wesley Snipes basically stole the scenes that he was in Blade next to Channing Tatum's Gambit, and many people after seeing Wesley Snipes play Blade in Deadpool and Wolverine much more prefer to see Wesley Snipes get one more shot at playing the legendary iconic character than they would see Marshala Ali look to try to put his own take on the character. And that's possibly why Marvel Studios at this point has decided to delay a production of Blade indefinitely and have taken the film off the schedule because they already know that after having a series of box office failures such as the Marvels and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and the upcoming Captain America Brave New World, they basically don't want to create another box office disaster with this Blade reboot. So what they're possibly doing is looking to take this film off the schedule. And as they take this film off the schedule, what they want to do right at this point, I believe what Marvel Studios wants to do is what they want to do is, I believe, regroup as related to Blade because right now they have gone out here and greenlit this film for production and they don't want to take any more guaranteed losses is because that's what they believe the Marshala Ali film will be, a guaranteed loss for them. So what I believe they want to do by pulling the film off the schedule is they know that they've already greenlit the money, but while the, and since they've greenlit the money, what they want to do is regroup on this film and regroup, and instead of making a Blade movie that would reboot Marshala Ali, I believe what Marvel Studios is looking to do is they're looking to make a Blade movie, but a Blade movie they know that will make them money, a film that will star Wesley Snipes, possibly in his final appearance as the iconic character that basically revived the entire superhero movie genre. Because at this point, Marvel Studios has lost a lot of money on box office failures from fail four, I mean phase four, I mean and fa fail five, I mean phase five, and as they've lost money on these two phases, they don't want to see the superhero genre wind up in the same place it was back in 1997 when Batman and Robin basically destroyed the genre by presenting this a uh, campy schlocky version of superheroes when people wanted darker, grittier characters. And in the case of Marvel Studios, they've gone out here and presented a lot of social justice identity politics in their movies in what many people call the MCU, which basically transposed over the MCU. And what they want to do, I believe, right now at this point is try to adjust and adjust by going out here after the success of Deadpool and Wolverine, getting that billion dollars by looking to try to build an audience and some momentum by, I believe, regrouping with a Blade movie starring Wesley Snipes, a film that would possibly be a solid box office hit if it was executed well, and if it was just as strong and compelling in story as the original Blade, they could possibly have a major blockbuster on their hands. And Wesley Snipes basically told everybody in Deadpool and Wolverine that there would be only one Blade, and let's make, and I believe Marvel Studios wants to make his words come true and basically say that there's going to only be one Blade and pulling the film off the schedule indefinitely. What this does is give Marvel Studios an opportunity to go out here and go out and let Wesley go out here and write a story based on his character in one great adventure and then position that film into an open slot later on in about 2027 or 2028 where they can go out here and launch a Blade movie featuring Wesley Snipes and have that film come out and, and wind up reaching all of those old school Blade fans and those old school comic fans out here who see Blade as an icon of the superhero movie genre, if, if Marvel Studios is smart enough to do this, they can basically capitalize on some of the momentum that they had for their entire superhero movie genre that they picked up as related to Goodwill from the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. So 
This decision to take Blade off the schedule, I believe, is a smart decision to take this movie off the off the schedule because they never had a script. And if you don't have a script, you can't establish a shooting schedule. And if you can't establish a shooting schedule and you have no director, then there's no movie to make. So the best thing to do is to take the movie off the schedule. Yes, the money has been greenlit but you have an opportunity to make a great Blade movie. I mean, you have Wesley Snipes on the schedule and you have Wesley Snipes available. So go out and make the Wesley Snipes Blade movie and get the big box office like they did for Deadpool and Wolverine. That would be the strategy I would go for as related to saving this project because the Marsha Allah Ali film basically is dead and will never get off the ground. And the best thing to do is let give Marshallah Ali a nice little bit of pay and then send him on his way to go pursue other projects he wants to pursue. That would be the best thing to do in this case is to just let Marshallah Ali do what he's going to do because there's no way that they can make that Blade movie. There's no story there, and the audience isn't really interested. And again, if you want to make money on a movie, you have to answer three critical questions. Who is the main character? What do they want? And why should we care? And it's been hard to care about Marshala Ali as Blade when Wesley Snipes is known for defining the character, and it's just better to just let Wesley Snipes play the character that he defined and let him play the signature role that he wound up creating. That would be the best course of action for Marvel Studios at this point. I mean, the goodwill is there from Deadpool and Wolverine, and all you have to do is just let that goodwill turn into box office and let that goodwill turn into an instant blockbuster the same way you had with Deadpool and Wolverine. That's the best course of action I see for the Blade character, instead of putting them in another awful movie. I mean, you've already got the audience there that wants to see Wesley Snipes, so let them see him in one last great movie and let the character ride off into the sunset in one final great film that shows the legendary vampire hunter played by the guy who defined the role. That's what I would rather see in as a ready to a Blade movie, and that's the best thing to do with this postponement. Use it as a chance to regroup and use it as a chance to make a blockbuster that could go out here and keep the superhero genre going and keep people interested in watching superhero movies for another couple of years. Now, my first full comic, John Haynes at Death Store, is available on Lulu.com right now. And if you want to pick up a paper copy, you can find a paper copy on Lulu.com by clicking the link in the description box. And you can get a digital version of John Haynes at Death Store on Amazon.com or Comixology for $3.99. And you can get a copy of my other digital comic, Esteem No Good Deed. You can find that comic on Kindle for $0.99 cents on Amazon.com. And if you want to pick up the books of the SJS Direct Universe, like my vampire novel, Eternal Night, or my vampire stories like Isis, Night of the Vampires, Isis, Bride of Dracula, or Isis, Escape from Transylvania, or my horror stories like Esteem Horror of the Hyena Woman, or Esteem Horror in the Hamptons, all that action-packed horror and, and action is available on Amazon.com and the SJS Direct Universe in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find these books at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. Now, if you want to see me talking about comics, science fiction, or fantasy, you can drop a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this action-packed all-new Esteem series adventure. Get your copy of Esteem Horror in the Hamptons in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon, Goddess Next Door, and John Haynes team up to take on the dark vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dracula, in paperback and e-reader than online booksellers today. Now available in paperback and Kindle, Stop Simpin' in Cyberspace. Learn how to avoid predatory females like Instagram models and e-girls in their virtual con games with Stop Simpin' in Cyberspace. Get your copy of Stop Simpin' in Cyberspace in paperback and Kindle today. 
Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.